everyone, I have a very special treat for you today. You guys might know this guy is Tommy Earl Jenkins or Die Hardman. What's up? What up, people? <laughs> Thanks for taking some time out of your busy schedule to talk. Uh, I, I guess let's start things out with uh, how's it going out there? How how you doing in L.A.? I'm good, man. Uh, we've been I'm in L.A., obviously, and uh, we've had a few days of heavy rainfall. Bit of time fall. Got to watch out for that. Oh, yeah. You, know? you got to watch uh, out for that. <laughs> <laughs> and so today seems like the first day in a while where it's actually the sun has come back. So I'm very excited about that. That's good. Sunshine and interview. Sounds like a good day. Hey, and, and, and L.A. What, what more can you ask for? <laughs> <laughs> I got to ask, is the traffic as bad as it looks out there? Yes. <laughs> Ooh, mm, it just looks abysmal. Right. So, yeah, the traffic is really bad I'm mean, on the freeways especially during rush hour it is it's ridiculous i'm i'm used to it and it doesn't really bother me that much i sit in the car and i listen to music and you know i've got the the vision of the mountains around me when i'm driving and so it kind of keeps me calm but you know i think once you know that that's what's going on you expect that you just have to deal with it the best way you can better to drive in it than walk in it at least at least you're not walking across the country G- correct yes correct <laughs> So today I've got a couple of questions lined up. Die Hardman, Death okay. Stranding, all that. Okay. Uh, I guess the best place to start is how were you approached for the role of Die Hardman? H- how how did you end up in the role? Uh, so we're going back, that's well over almost uh, a year, well, a year and a half, probably two years nearly. Um, I, yeah, I just, like most things in, in our profession, I got a, a request to do a, a self-tape um, where I had to film a couple of scenes not really knowing anything about the, the project because it was slightly sort of ambiguous. Um, and I just did a couple of scenes, uh, filmed it, and sent it back in and just waited. And I think it was probably like a month before I heard anything and almost pretty much kind of dismissed the fact that it, you know, it wasn't going to be something that was going to go my way. And then I got the, the, the call saying yes. And uh, the rest was history. You said it was ambiguous. Uh, did you know it was going to be a video game or anything like that? Um, it, was, it was. I did know that it was, it, it was interactive and it was going to be motion capture. Uh, but there was no specific name given to the character. Or I think at the time he was just known as the commander. The commander, huh? The commander, yeah. It sounds like it was going to be a more military style role. It really was. And, and basically, in my, in my head, when I was thinking about it and doing the audition for it, that's what I had in my, in my mind. Obviously, it was someone who was very uh, military-oriented, you know, was in charge, had gravitas, had all these things um, within the breakdown. And so I basically had to work off of that. You know, there was no idea, nothing uh, stated about Die Hardman or what he looked like or necessarily anything like that. So, yeah. That's pretty interesting to hear because uh, mm. everybody knows he's a pretty secretive guy, Kojima. Um, but to hear just how ambiguous it was that you didn't yeah. even know what the character I, was. I think, I think, mm, yeah, I mean, I think it was very much one of those things where you are given as little as, as possible, but just enough to that we would be able to, if we were viewing it, to see exactly how this character, how you would portray this particular character. We don't want to give too much away, but at the same time, we're letting you be creative enough to see what you bring to it. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so Death Stranding has been out almost a month, and I've been keeping an eye on Twitter, and <laughs> I notice you interact a lot with the fans. Like, a <laughs> lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Twitter fiend, yeah. I mean, my fingers are just constantly on the go. I don't think I've ever said thank you so much to so many people in, in one in one uh, on one project as much as I have with this. I mean, everyone's been so forthcoming um, about it, not just necessarily about me, but about the entire project, you know, and it, it is one of those things that I feel like it's not like anything. It's not going to please everybody. It's not going to be to everyone's taste, but ultimately I think at the end of the day, those people who have sort of, you know, decided it wasn't for them haven't actually played it. So they don't really know, how in depth it goes or how emotional it goes or what kind of journey it's really going to take you. And I think they see, see it for what it is when they see snippets of gameplay and go, oh, it's, it's not for me, you know, but it's, there's a lot more to it. 
I can vouch for that myself. It starts out very slow, yeah. but as you play, more opens right. up, and soon you're just in the narrative and the gameplay. Yeah. It's it's really something yeah. special. Yeah. But I and I sorry, and I, I think that's a wonderful aspect of what Hideo's done in in terms that it why give you everything right at the beginning? Why why you know if it's if it's shooting up that you want and all of that, if you get that at the beginning, that's that's basically saying we're hitting 10 and we're going to stay at 10 all the way through. Let's, you know, it, let's start slow and let's go somewhere and let's, let's draw you in. Let's get you, you know, to know the surrounding you're going to be in. And even that will, will change, you know? So uh, I think it's one of those things that you kind of have to, like most things, let's give it, give it a, give it a go and see where you go. And like I said, it still may not be for everyone, but at the end of the day, I guarantee that you'll, you'll find something that is going to move you about this story and this man's journey. Yeah, it starts out as a slow burn, but the buildup is so worth it. I, I really enjoy it. Uh, so I have to ask, leading up to Death Stranding, everybody thought that Mads Mikkelsen's character Cliff was going to be the fan favorite, and then it was Die Hardman. <laughs> how do you, how um, do you feel about I that? Don't, I don't, it's funny, I don't, I don't necessarily see that, but from that perspective, um, I just see it really pretty much as, you know, there, there's some big characters, you know, we've got some fantastic people. We've got Norman, we've got Mads, you know, we've got Troy, you know, um, and all these other amazing people playing these, these fantastic roles. Um, and I didn't necessarily ever think, or still don't that, you know, Died Hartman, I think I find, I'm finding more that he's becoming a favorite, uh, you know, and I'm only going based on what people send me and messages that they send directly to me and, you know, about my performance. And I think that's, that's wonderful. And I, and I am truly grateful and I'm appreciative of it. Uh, but I had no idea that the impact would be as much as it is, honestly, you know, and considering that the game's only been out a, just over a month, you know, and for those people who have played it and have beat it and have gotten to the end to see the full story, you know, because I think that's important, you know, and considering that that's still a lot that people will have to do, um, I'm sure I will hear a lot more people coming to me once they finish the game, because obviously um, there's a lot that happens towards the end. So if you're still playing Death Stranding, definitely stick with it. Uh, no spoilers, but... Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, no spoilers, uh, but wow. Um, so you've been in video games before, World of Warcraft, Pillars of Eternity, just to name a couple. Um, but this is the first time you've done motion capture? Correct. That is correct, yes. yes. And uh, ha ha explain that. Talk about uh, it a bit. Yeah, yeah no, it, is. Um, it was one of the things that I always wanted to, to do in terms of video games. You know, it's quite very different to just going into the booth and, and, you know, reading the characters that you've been given for that particular game um, or on that particular day. Um, motion capture for me is very much like filming a, mo a movie or, or, or TV. Uh, the only thing is that you don't actually have the physical sets to work with or those, those props or, or full costume. So, you know, you're in your sort of onesie <laughs> uh, motion capture suit with the, you know, your sort of Velcro dots on you. And then of course your face is all dotted up and everything. And you have, you know, if I have a gun, then I'll have a makeshift gun. You Maybe know, something along the lines of styrofoam or something. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's just something that you can physically have, you know, or something that looks like a pipe or a tube. But at, eventually, you know, that's going to look like a gun. Um, you know, yeah. So you're working as the actor. I feel that you are much more challenged in some ways because you have to both physically and emotionally bring to this particular scene or, or uh, you know, uh, passage of dialogue that you actually have to really live it a little harder than you would if everything was painted around you. That's not to say that actors don't, are, are doing less in other ways. I just find that this was a big challenge comparing the two that I actually have to put myself in a situation or a surrounding that I don't actually see. Right, right, yeah. I get that. Um, so, the motion capture, is that all done independently from the voicing, like in the booth? Uh, no, no, it, it really de it depends. There's some, some uh, uh, picture capture and stuff that I will do in the, in the booth, 
but still have the headgear on. So they're still capturing uh, mouth movement and eyes and things like that, facial movement. But motion capture, you are literally, I mean, all my scenes that I did on the mocap stage, um, my cut scenes were all done with dialogue and done as an acting scene. Literally, you are on a stage with with the set pieces around you, and I'm working with either Norman or working with Mads, and we it has been blocked out as if you are, you know, filming a movie. So you have to literally work in ideally the same way. Um, so I have my dialogue. So I don't that doesn't in the mo, in the motion capture that doesn't come later, but you do it as you are physically doing the the piece. I guess that'll lead into my next question, which just got a lot more interesting. Okay. Uh, towards the end of the game, there is okay. a particular scene. Okay. And uh, yeah. there's been a rumor floating around that that entire scene was actually shot in a single take between you and Norman Correct. Reedus. For real. Correct. That is true. No way. That, <laughs> that is true. Um, and it has been a, a, a question that has come up, and I have to... to to keep, you know, clarifying that that was one go. I'll never forget the day when that actually happened for that particular scene. And we did it in one go. And we were so happy that it went from beginning to end with no stops. And we only did it a second time, I think, purely for safety, just to do it. But as far as they were concerned, if, it, if, that, if we hadn't done the second one, and that's pretty much, I believe, what you see. I don't think there's any cutting with the second with the second take of that because I I can I can remember how different it slightly was, but I knew at that moment it was going to be something that I I have to commit to from the beginning. Take myself off to the side, pull my my focus in, and then go for it. And I think that's where we ended with that. Well, that's just incredible to imagine. Honestly, that's uh, wow. Um, I know a lot of actors, they say for scenes like that, they'll tap into a past trauma. Was that the case with you? Yeah, I, d I don't think for me I had to to tap into a past trauma. I think when I got the script and I knew that particular and read that scene and knew what Hideo wanted and where it was supposed to go. I knew the storyboard of what what points to, to hit and where it needed to drive to. Um you know, I, I think that what I did was try to stay as the actor in that moment and put myself in the situation of which of having to deal and, you know, and speak with Sam about this. And I think I remember completely there was a, a moment as I could feel the shifts happening at each point where it started to, to escalate. And, and working with Norman, I mean, literally looking into his eyes that was enough for me, you know, knowing his story and his journey. I kind of get goosebumps a little bit talking about it now because I remember it <laughs> because I remember it so vividly and how, how connected he was with me at that moment, because he had to basically do nothing but stand there, but it was more than just standing there. You know, what he did was stand there and he was connected with me and he saw me all the way through. And no matter when I chose to make that contact with him, he was there a hundred percent. And for him, I think he helped me make that that scene work. Like the dynamic between you two, it was just so incredible to watch. And the way you both played off of each other just really sold the scene. Mm. Uh, it, it was amazing. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. So shortly after the launch of the game, I happened to see a picture of you on Twitter with the uh, collector's edition of Death Stranding. <laughs> So I'm just kind of curious, uh, how far are you into the game and, uh, what, what do you think of it so far? So my, my schedule is, is crazy at the moment. So I can only snap and grab, uh, a few minutes at a time. And so I'm convinced I was hoping to have it done by, you know, uh, the game awards coming up and everything so that I'd be, yeah, I know exactly where everything was. I don't think it's going to happen. There's just so many hours in this game you know, that I'm never going to be able, I don't think I'm going to be able to finish that uh, by the time that that happens, but I am enjoying it. I'm, it's the, it's a weird situation to sort of be in when I am playing it and watching what's on the screen and hearing myself give myself directions, you know, which is a, a little odd. And then, and then also playing Sam, you know, so it's, it's, it's really cool and a little weird at the same time, but it's, 
it's been an amazing um, uh, journey with it. And it's only, and for me, it's only just beginning. Like I said, I haven't gotten that far. I think I'm like on episode or, or chapter two or something. So I'm just, it's going to be a while. Well, if it makes you feel any better, I literally just beat the game yesterday. You're kidding. Nope, I'm wow. not. Uh, I've been playing it since launch, just completely yeah. invested into it. Um, doing all the wow. side quests and stuff too. It. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I think that's that's part of it as well. So you played from from launch, and you only just finished yesterday. Just yesterday. That's amazing. Oh, it was an incredible ride. I'm probably getting ready to play it again soon. Oh uh, yeah. Right, <laughs> so you're gonna play? Uh, what, when what level are you playing? Hard um, difficulty. Hard difficulty. Wow. Yeah, you got to wow. watch out for those BT sometimes, though. They can get dicey. I'm sure. I can only imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this yeah. next question is actually not from me. It's a question from my editor. Um, he's been really curious about this, and so have I, to be honest. Uh, there's been a lot of cans of monster in mm -hmm. Death Stranding, so I just want to know how big of an impact that was uh, behind the scenes. Like, were you guys drinking it a lot? What was going on there? Mm, no, I, in all honesty, I have absolutely no idea. Because I have not... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry for that shot in the dark. Yeah, there. it was definitely a shot in the dark. A shot in the dark. Uh, and my answer to that is, I don't actually have any idea. I'm sure there is a connection with it, and that could be a multitude of things. So I don't want to speak out of turn and say what it is or what it isn't. Because in all honesty, the truth is, I don't really know. I don't really know. Well, you know, it's it's the questions like that, the hard hitting questions. We really got to yeah. ask them. <laughs> well, you asked it, and that's the answer we got. That's right. <laughs> well, I think with this next one, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, I know you're a busy guy. Oh, good. So after your experience with Death Stranding, I think I just I, I'm just wondering, would you work with Hideo Kojima again? In a heartbeat. Uh, yeah. Come on, Kojima. You heard the man. Let's let's get another game going. Let's <laughs> let's do this. Let's. Thank you very much. No, I, w I would definitely. I, I would love to. Would love to. All right. For anybody who missed the beginning of this, this was uh, Tommy Earl Jenkins, Die Hardman. Uh, thank you for coming on. <laughs> no worries, man. I appreciate it. How how about another interview in the future? Huh? What do you think yeah, of that? Absolutely, of course. All right. Uh, let's say around the time the PC version of Death Stranding comes out. <laughs> We're there, man. All right. You heard it here first, everyone. You got it. You heard it here first. Right here. Right here. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. You have a good one. Absolutely. No worries, mate. Thank you.